Uh, hi, Karan, you there? Yes, I'm here. Great, I'm back. I'm just waiting for a few more minutes so that people can join. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. All right, um, I guess some of them did not get an email. I don't know why. Uh, just give it a few more minutes.
All right, let's get started. Thanks everyone for joining this uh, webinar. So I'm Mahesh from Tamerica. Um, we conduct a lot of informative sessions and uh, especially during this period, every year we conduct a lot of uh, college readiness webinar, you know, bringing a lot of expertise and uh, talking to parents and also the students who went to college recently. So today, um we're going to talk about uh, you know how to save for college um you know from the beginning like uh you know if you have a, a smaller kid and um, you know even if you have a, a kid who is going to elementary or if your kid is in uh, middle school you know all sort of things we are going to discuss today and um, if you have not watched uh, my earlier sessions so last two times um the first one is we conducted about FAFSA, uh, how to apply for a federal aid. And uh, the next one is CSS profile, which is uh, meant for um, you know, applying for the aid for the private colleges. And today we are going to you know, uh, bring in the financial planner, um, Karan Murugeshu. So he is going to talk about, he's going to guide us how to save for college in a, in a different way. Uh, uh, perspective. So let's welcome him. Um, um, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Karan uh, Murugesu. I'm a certified financial planner um, and founder of Amar World Financial Group. Um, nice to uh, have you. Uh, nice to be here with everyone. And I would like to thank uh, uh, Magesh and Tamarika Tam Tam for having me here. Thank you, uh, Murugesu. Um, I know we have been talking for a while. And yes. uh, finally, you know, I'm happy to have you uh, in America. So we we worked with uh, many financial planners uh, for for many uh, events. But um, so Karan Murugeshu, he has been practicing um, for about ten to eleven years, I guess, right? And uh, he's from New Jersey, and uh, I guess that is one of the reason why we are going to talk about. New Jersey colleges and, uh, you know, compare and see, uh, you know, go into the details, right? And nice. uh, so today, um, I guess a lot of parents are very much interested in this webinar. And uh, we see about uh, 53 people registered for this. And out of 53, I would say about 48%, they are from New Jersey. So <laughs> I think we're all connected together. And uh, in fact, I'm also from New Jersey, but I moved to New York about 10 years ago. And um, yeah, let's get started. So Karan, why don't you nice. introduce yourself uh, quickly? Okay. Um, just give so, a brief uh, overview of what you do, uh, and then we get we can get started. All right. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity. Uh, like I said, uh, Karan Morigesu, I have been uh, uh, working in the financial services industry since 2010. Um, I am uh, affiliated with a New York Life Insurance Company for my financial planning practice as well. And uh, I, I established my own uh, planning practice in 2015. Uh, it's going well. And at our firm, like I said, we focus on holistic financial planning where we will be um, working with you, identifying your financial goals and helping you reach your financial goals. So that's a, a small introduction for myself. You, you can always uh, visit our website and find more detail about us. Great. Um, so just few are, uh, you know, few input here. Uh, so this is the, uh, uh, it's a first Tamil channel from America. And uh, we do a lot of uh, programs uh, purely in Tamil, but this is more informative sessions. So we started doing it in, you know, uh, in English and uh, because we wanted to serve for, you know, entire community, not just Tamil people. And um, second thing is uh, from our side and current also going to be the same. So these sessions only for educational purpose. So we kind of wanted to bring the expertise and uh, share the knowledges. Um, yeah. So uh, current, why don't we start with this? Um, you know, this is a very good session because, um, you know, people, we come here as an immigrant and then over the period of time, you know, we uh, send our kids to the school and then, you know, after some time, we, we have to send it for the college, right? So, yes. um, so 
could we start like why do we need to save for college first of all um, because i see that um, the state colleges are kind of affordable and uh, so when i came to this country actually i thought just like a uh, school is you know people say school is free but still not free i came to know after buying a home because you are paying the school tax right right so same same way uh, uh, for the college the state college is kind of affordable but then there are a lot of very good colleges which is not at all affordable it's very expensive yeah. um so let's talk about that and then great um, again uh, thanks uh, magesh and uh, we are not going to be uh, sharing any uh, powerpoint or any presentation here we are just going to have a conversation so i uh, hope uh, you can be engaged and feel free to take notes if you need it because uh, since uh, there is no uh, screen be shared so uh, please uh, listen carefully if you don't understand uh, i think uh, you have an option to ask questions or unmute and ask the questions on a question session so uh, makesh um, as i uh, know on your previous episode uh, you had advices uh, discuss about financial aid applications and uh, python and plans uh, providing a different aspect of uh, planning for savings uh, towards college education would benefit the audience of, of this webinar uh, today uh, let us uh, narrow down our conversation and uh, dive a little bit deep into understanding the mechanism for uh, four years of uh, college so we are going to be fo uh, focusing on you now how to fund a uh, four years of college uh, before i even get into any details um, i want to make this disclaimer please remember that i am sharing this information for educational purposes only my intention is not to provide any financial advice or recommendation during our time together today uh, before implementing any of this uh, strategies we discussed today please please consult with your tax advisor and the financial advisor you are working with uh, if you don't have anyone uh, that you are working with uh, feel free to get in touch with us uh, we may be able to help you out okay Awesome. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, Magesh just mentioned that, right? College is not free. Um, uh, it, it, that is true for uh, most of our community members because we earn uh, significantly higher income compared to you know most of the other people. So I would agree with uh, Magesh on that. So uh, let us understand how costly a four years college could be, um, right? Uh, I live in New Jersey, so I will be talking a lot about uh, New Jersey-based uh, planning, right? So, uh, and uh, I hope that will benefit the audience here. So I am uh, taking the example of two colleges from New Jersey to show you the course differences between uh, those two colleges, okay? Yeah. So um, most of the people are familiar with uh, Rutgers, the State University and the Princeton University, right? The Ivy League mm -hmm. University, right? So yeah. according to the uh, Pearson data, the Rutgers University's current course are for in-state students. It's about $30,000 and $30,550, $30, uh, which includes uh, tuition, uh, room, books, and other fees. Mm -hmm. And uh, for uh, the out-of-state students, the same college, same Rutgers, that's cost them around $47,750, right? Yeah. Um, so now uh, look at it's Rutgers. More, right? more than double, right? I would, uh, that's right. Uh, it's around uh, $77,000 and 690 uh, for this calendar year. Mm -hmm. So that will include the fees and other expenses related to car, you know, going to uh, Princeton. So mm -hmm. for uh, for those uh, uh, those of you who are here, I believe uh, you are here because uh, you want, you have a child, or um, or you have a, uh, you have children that are planning on going to college in the future, in the, uh, coming in the future, right, Mayesh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, my so, my my kid is going to college next year, so. So I have been, uh, you know, uh, educating myself quite a lot uh, for the uh, for the last six months to one year. You know, I talked to many parents and uh, talked to a lot of college counselors also. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting, right? Very good. So, uh, so what I wanted to focus on, uh, you know, when you are thinking of saving something towards the college, right? Mm -hmm. um, there are certain elements uh, that you should uh, have a clear understanding of, okay? Uh, the first uh, element, um, I would say there are four elements, right? Yeah. The first one, I call it time horizon, okay? Um, how long do you have until your child go to college? For an example, if you have a newborn, right? So mm -hmm. you have about 
18 years for you to you know, plan for it. Uh, in other words, 18 years for you to invest, right? Yep. At the same time, if you waited for uh, 10 years uh, at, at the age of 10, you have about eight years to invest uh, into a you know, saving plan. So um, that is going to make an impact on your uh, final, uh, you know, uh, planning and how much you have to save on for your children's college. So the second element is um, uh, the current cost of uh, college. So knowing how much the college is costing right now, like I just mentioned, right, for New Jersey, if you look at Rutgers, right, $30,000 and uh, $30,500 some change, right? So knowing that number, that's the uh, starting point. So, uh, so you know this is what is costing. The second thing you should know, the how much the college cost increasing year to year. So college cost inflation, that's how we call it. So in an, on an average, uh, the, the historically, the college cost is going up by somewhere between three to six percentage every year. So that is an important uh, factor that you, you should consider when you are starting for a uh, you know, college planning uh, saving option here, right? So the other uh, thing that the fourth element you should consider, the investment return. So if you are investing some money, you should uh, know how much you are expecting to get out of your uh, uh, investment. So the, those, these are the four elements you should make sure uh, you, know, you, and you have a clear understanding of when you are starting uh, your investments. Um, Mike, do you have any uh, questions here? Sorry, okay. let's, let's go one by one. Uh, it's quite interesting one. See. Um, I, I wish, uh, you know, we had, uh, uh, you know, kind of a financial planners or advisors, you know, when we came to this country, you know, um, because it, all these things like happening probably last uh, five to 10 years. And before that, uh, you know, we didn't have much uh, knowledge about it, you know, so... Right. Uh, and even 529, I came to know about uh, probably five to six years ago uh, yes. or, or, you know, somewhere around that area, not before that. Um, that, that makes sense because we, we are trying to build our life with, the, you know, we, we are first. Yeah, there. we were so busy catching up with our green card, you know, all, <laughs> all sort of things. So we, went, uh, we didn't think about this kind of a thing. You know, we, we yeah. always think, okay, we have enough time. Why right. we need to rush, right? Right. So uh, let me, uh, you know, since, uh, you know, uh, let me help you understand a little bit better on the four mm -hmm. elements, right? So the first thing I said, uh, the time horizon, right? So in order for uh, me to help you understand this concept, I'm going to make some assumptions here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the child is uh, uh, from New Jersey, and I'm just going to say uh, the child is going to go to Rutgers, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. also, I'm going to assume that... Uh, the college cost is increasing by 3% every year, okay? That's an inflation, and, I see that, yep. Yes, at the same time, the rate of return what you're expecting from uh, your investment is 8%. Let me summarize again. So the child is going to college uh, in uh, New Jersey. The current cost for the New Jersey college is $30,000, okay. And for, let's, let's look at a newborn. So now that we have 18 years to invest mm -hmm. and the college is uh, increasing by 3% every year, and your investment is earning at eight uh, percent of the return, right? So that's a compound interest. Yes, is 8%. compounding at eight percent every year. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, uh, first, uh, since the uh, cost is increasing by three percent, mm -hmm. uh, and your investment is earning, uh, uh, you know, compounding annually at eight yeah. percent, you need to understand uh, what is your real rate of return, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Financial planner, we uh, use a formula to compute that real rate of return. Yeah. And if you compute that, it's going to be around 4.85% uh, because, you know, 3% increase on the college course and you are earning 8%. If you mm -hmm. see what, what am I really getting out of this investment is around 4.85%, right? Yeah. So secondly, you need to understand the cost of attending the college in 18 years with the 3% increase. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm going to take that $30,000 and change. I'm going to inflate it by 3%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you inflate that by 3%, that's going to be $52,000 and 20. Okay. I'm rounding that number. Okay. From, so from 30,000 to, it is going to increase to 52,000 after Correct. 18 years. Correct. That means the first year of the college, 
Yeah. Okay. On the 18 year, uh, let's say the son is going to step into the college, you need to bring a bill, uh, mm -hmm. a check of $52,000. Yeah. Now, yeah. That's not the end of it, right? The $52,000 in, in our assumption, that it mm -hmm. is increased by 3% every year. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so out of the three years of, uh, you know, you need to adjust the cost for that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, um, you need to have, with the inflation adjusted rate of return, you need to have around, $194,000 saved on year 18, so that that $194,000 can fund the college for the next four years. Make sense? Sure, yeah. Right. Any, any, any questions on that part, how we get to that $194,000? No, I'm good, yeah. Thank Great. You. Great, so now the important question comes to, right? How much would I invest every month or every year to reach yeah. that goal? So that's where mm -hmm. we are here, right? So um, in order for you to read $194,000 and the change, right? In 18 mm -hmm. years with the 8% rate of return, you yeah. need to invest uh, around uh, $5,300, uh, 5,300 annually. Okay, just like uh, how much you contribute for IRA. Very oh, similar yeah, to that. Yeah, around the, around, around the range. Yeah, okay. Right? So, yeah. 52,000, uh, I mean, 5,300 okay. annually. If you, you know, if, now that you are earning, in, uh, you know, return on that, if you look at monthly, you will be uh, investing around $405. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if you, mm -hmm. uh, let's say you wanted to systematically invest every month. So if mm -hmm. you put away uh, for, uh, for $404 a month with the 8% of the return, End yeah. of eighteen years, you will have saved. You would have saved around one hundred and ninety-four thousand dollars. That's the uh, that's the calculation here. So, make sense? Sure. Yeah, that looks uh, very interesting. But we missed the boat. Yeah. Yes. So now uh, you may be uh, you know thinking about what is the cost of procrastinating, right? Yeah. What, what, uh, like what, why, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't do this when the child is going to start going to grade one or you know high school, mm -hmm. right? So let us just look at these numbers again. So for for a uh, you know newborn, you will be paying around four hundred and five dollars a month in order for the child to save around one hundred and ninety thousand dollars in a college saving account. So at the same time, let's say you waited until uh, uh, the child turns six years old, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The child is about to go to grade one, for an example, right? Yeah. So that, now that we have you know last six years, right? Now have twelve uh, years to invest that money, right? So the, our time horizon now is about 12 years. So in 12 years, the first year college course would be, remember with the 3% inflation, uh, the, uh, the first year college course would be around $43,600, uh, right? So, and if I do the calculation for uh, how much you would have to have in your savings account by the time the child is in college uh, to fund the college for four years, you should have saved around 100 and Sixty-three thousand dollars. That's the um, number. So if you look, if you ask me how I'm doing all this number, um, you know, I have a financial calculator. Okay. So I use this financial calculator to come up with this number. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, that so uh, that's how I came up with this number. And uh, okay. in order for you to reach one hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars and uh, around six hundred dollars over twelve years, uh, with mm -hmm. the eight percent of rate of return, now that you have to invest around. Eighty-five hundred dollars, eighty-five hundred sixty-five, eight thousand five hundred sixty-five annually, right? And if you look yeah. at monthly, now you are putting up. You need to put away around six hundred seventy-five dollars. Do you that's see the, up, value of, that's the kind of upper uh, limit? Yeah. All right. Correct. 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 So you see the difference. So if you, you waited uh -huh. six, six years, now that you are paying a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is what's happening here. So let's 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 say you know we like you just said right we don't plan until the last minute sometime unfortunately yes. right yeah right so let's say uh, you know someone uh, child is in um, is a, is just getting into high school uh, let's say mm -hmm. at the age of fourteen and yeah. we have uh, another four years to invest so let's see how this is gonna you know impact your planning right yeah um, now that uh, you know. Now the child is 14, three years, the cost of, uh, you know, inflated adjusted cost for the college is going to be around $34,000 and um, 500 for an example, right? Around mm -hmm. that. And uh, now that the child is going to go to college in eight years, the, uh, in order for you to fund 
uh, fund the college for another four years, you should have saved $128,310, okay? Mm -hmm. Now that you have, you know, four years to accumulate or save, you know, save all that money, okay? Yeah. You need to invest around $28,500 for the next four years with the 8% oh. rate of return so mm -hmm. that you can, you know, help your child go pay $194,000, I mean, $128,000 to the college. Yes. And if you look at it monthly, right, that's mm -hmm. around uh, $2,300. Just like right. a mortgage. Right? That's like a mortgage. So yeah. it was just like, you know, uh, a car payment before. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, but the newborn and uh, the great one, it was about a car payment. Now it's kind of mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. So these are just an example of, you know, why you have to start planning early, right? That, uh, that's excellent uh, points uh, that you put together. Um, uh, I also... Have a question here so what you described right now it's more like a planning right like uh, it, at what gauge you need to plan accordingly you need to pump up more money now at the same thing i can just put it in my savings account right so why do i need to uh, open up 529 what is the advantage awesome awesome so before i get into 529 um, let me you know now that we know what it uh, takes for our child to go to college mm -hmm. right we need to have this extra amount of money saved i see a lot of people uh, you know i work with a lot of people over the past 11 years uh, they are doing a lot of planning and uh, sometimes when you ask uh, them why you are doing this and they don't have a clear answer, clear answer for it so that's why i brought up all these uh, four elements so that you will understand why you are doing uh, you know and how we are doing and the uh, planning wise right you just talked about 529 let me just you know say uh, uh, how you can fund college right if you look at the first options right uh, let's say you have the money for an example your child is going to go to college in 18 years and you have about $194,000 cash. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to take any more market risk and you want to just keep the money. Hey, have, I'm happy for you. Have the money, just keep it and just yep. uh, you know, earn market for college. Mm -hmm. Right. That is one way. But the disadvantage of having cash, you are not growing your money. Okay. The money is yep. going to sit as it is and you are just losing the opportunity to grow your money. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that think, hey, why don't I do uh, put the money into a CD in a bank? Okay, yeah. but safe mm -hmm. and conservative. I, I'm not uh, planning on taking a lot of risk. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, if you say so, yes, it is conservative. Yes, you can do that. But again, you know, uh, if you look at the rate of return on that, it's going to be much, much lower. With the current interest environment, if you even get 1% of the rate of return, that's a very mm -hmm. high return on your CD. Or certificate yeah. of deposit, correct? And mm -hmm. other thing, uh, uh, let me talk a little bit about tax treatment, right? The, ta the mm -hmm. tax treatment will be based on the account type you hold the uh, money in. For an example, a lot of people are familiar with an idea of putting money into a 401k, correct? So yeah. the 401k, it comes from the IRS tax code, right? So as long mm -hmm. as you are, your account name title is 401k, on a traditional 401k, anything that you put away into the 401k, it is, uh, you are deferring the taxes. That means you are not paying your taxes. The money is going to grow tax deferred. That means you are not going to have, you can have, you are not going to have to pay the taxes when the money is growing. You, mm -hmm. you, you, you are given that benefit because your money is sitting in the account called 401k. That is, you know, respected by the IRS court, right? Just like that. So when the, yeah, go ahead, you have a question? No, no, please go ahead. Okay, so when the money is sitting in CD, usually the money sits in CD, it comes after paying your taxes, after tax money. And mm -hmm. the earnings on the CD, the year you earn, it will be taxable, right? So yeah. you will receive a tax bill. So that is one thing, okay? Second, uh, uh, let's say you are investing money into, you know, after paying the taxes, let's say you are investing money into stocks and bonds. So you are trying to save the money. So let, let me just do it on stock and bonds, for example, right? Mutual funds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, there will, will be some tax consequences uh, based on your uh, taxable uh, gain and distribution on the account. So you are still, you know, uh, losing certain portion of your growth to the taxes mm -hmm. at the time, right? More like capital gain taxes. Yes. When, like, you know, when, when there's a distribution, you may have to pay the taxes, you know, you will get a 10 mm -hmm. at the year end, right? Yeah. So what, what is happening at that time, you are taking a little portion away from your investment to pay the taxes, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So 
So in order to like on your 401k, why people love 401k, right? For example, I'm talking about 401k because a lot of people are familiar with the concept, right? Mm -hmm. When the money is growing, you don't see a tax bill. Yeah. That's the beauty. So just like that, I, uh, you know, the government has put some plan uh, for you to save towards college, mm -hmm. right? The one of the plan uh, is a uh, covered education savings account. A lot of people not aware of this type of account. It, it's a covered, it's a spelled C-O-V-E-R-D-E-L-L, -L, education okay. savings account, right? So mm -hmm. it was popular uh, at times, okay? Uh, it, it is just like uh, 529, but there yeah. the maximum contribution that you can make into a covered account is $2,000, okay? Okay. And uh, you can have only one account for a beneficiary, okay? Mm, okay. And uh, you have to use those funds uh, before 30 years old. So you have some, uh, you know, limitation and restriction. But if you look at the benefit of it, you know, when someone has a covered uh, you can pay, uh, you know, pre-K to 12 as well, also college, any growth. Uh, now, so, when you say $2,000, is it per year? Per year, yes. Oh. And only two thousand dollars, and uh, you know you have to use your uh, 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 contributions and uh, savings uh, accumulation by your age of thirty. Okay, mm -hmm. if it was popular before, uh, some changes made on four hundred one k because it was allowing people to take some money away and put it for you know the uh, great uh, okay. great ten uh, pre k all those expenses. So that it was popular. Now that four hundred one k is give uh, you know uh, I'm sorry at the five twenty nine right five twenty nine. Mm -hmm. It gives the same benefit, but if you look at the contribution level, there's no limit on how much you can put into a 529. Okay. Okay. So also just like your tax deferred uh, 401k account, mm -hmm. the money that grows in your 529 plan generally is tax free, as long as you use the money for a qualified higher education. Okay. Yeah. What, yeah. what you're doing here, mm -hmm. uh, you're taking the money after paying the taxes, let's say, you uh, you know you made a hundred thousand dollars. You paid twenty percent taxes. Uh, you broke mm -hmm. home eighty thousand dollars. From the eighty thousand dollars, you are setting away uh, ten thousand dollars into the five twenty nine plan. For an example, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. that ten thousand dollars is going to grow tax deferred. That means when right. the money is growing, you will not be receiving a tax bill. As mm -hmm. long as you use the money for a qualified uh, you know college education right. purpose. Now that you can also use it for. Uh, uh, you know, pre-K and uh, uh, pre-K up to uh, K, uh, uh, grade 12, you can, mm -hmm. you know, use that uh, by 29. You're sending private uh, schools and all. Correct, correct. So you have the flexibility on that as well. So people tend to like that idea because you can put more money because sure. we are talking about like, you know, $5,000 a year, $6,000 a year. This mm -hmm. will definitely help, uh, you know, help you get there. Okay, so one other thing on 529 I also wanted to tell you for uh, you know wealthy people and all someone who was behind on saving for college and they wanted to put a lot of a lot of money at once, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. If you know the concept of annual gift exclusion, right? Uh, generally, uh, you know I can give a fifty thousand dollars to as many as people I want without mm -hmm. incurring any uh, gift taxes. Okay. Okay. Uh, when when it goes over fifteen thousand dollars, there are some you know uh, tax filing requirements, uh, gift tax filing requirements, and all that. But um, mm -hmm. same thing. Uh, when you are doing a five two and nine plan, you are giving someone else money for their benefit, so that's a gift. Okay. Right. So, so you're gifting uh, to someone else. Correct. So up to fifteen thousand dollars, you can give without any problem, right? Mm -hmm. So. If you wanted to, you know, uh, only on 529 plan, you have the option to give five times of that amount at once. Oh, okay. okay? Five years of con uh, gift exclusive amount, you can put it into a 529 plan. That mm -hmm. means uh, we, we call it front loaded uh, 529 plans. So yeah. a father can give up to $75,000 for a child and mm -hmm. a mother can give up $75,000. So yes. that's $150,000 one, one shot. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, uh, please consider with your uh, you know, tax advisor on the tax filing on this, but uh, this is a great opportunity for someone who wants, who are behind and trying to save on a short time period, okay? Sure. So you have those opportunities. So those are the advantages I'm talking about on a 529, right? Yeah. So if you sure. were to ask me, uh, you know, why people are not doing this for an exam, mm -hmm. okay? 
Well, um, I would say maybe they, uh, you don't see that your child is going to college or going to go to college in the future. You have some, uh, I would say, doubt, right? That your child go to college or uh, because this money, you need to end up using the money for college. Otherwise, there are some tax consequences on that yeah. earnings, right? Yeah, um, most of the time, um, especially Indians, like we don't know, right? Whether we are going to stay back in this country or most of the time we think that we are going to go back, but it never happened, yeah. right? So uh, I guess that is what, um, uh, you know, a couple of my friends also said, you know, if you grow your money in 529 and if you leave this country, you may not use it, um, you know, uh, if, you, if you go outside of US. Um, uh, I would say uh, there are certain ways people, um, like let's say uh, uh, someone is going to a university outside the country for a semester, for an example, uh, they call up, uh, some, you know, some students can do a semester abroad, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those kind of purposes, uh, it is, uh, you know, five tons flexible to go ahead and yeah. pay for it. But uh, in that case, you know, uh, there's a valid reason for people to procrastinate, right? But other yeah. thing, uh, let's say you have two child and uh, one person is getting, uh, you know, you are doing this by 29 and uh, one mm-hmm. person is getting, uh, not going to college, then you can change the beneficiary on that in your family, okay? Mm-hmm. So you have the flexibility to change the beneficiary on your uh, 529. Let's say, worst comes to worst, let's say your child didn't go to college, maybe you can use that 529 and to pay for your you know, education at a later point. So that is another option too, okay? Yeah. So those are the uh, you know, uh, things uh, if you look at 529. And other way people can save money. Some people, you know, uh, do some uh, cash value life insurance to, you know, pay for the money because when you have cash value in your life insurance, um, you can borrow the money uh, yeah. to pay for the college. But uh, um, there's a disadvantage there and advantage there. Advantage for like, you know, for those people who don't know that whether they will, the child will go to college or something, you know, they mm-hmm. may don't have to take the money. They can keep the money here. But uh, disadvantage there, you know, life insurance comes with the cost of insurance. And it will take a long time for it to build up uh, the cash value because there are, uh, you know, at the beginning, the company take a lot of risk because of that, the cash value is going to be much lower at the beginning of early years. So it will take a lot of time for it to accumulate what it needs to pay for the college. And again, you will be borrowing the money from your cash value. And then if you don't do it in the right way, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go too deep into that planning side of it no. uh, because, uh, you know, but people do that, those kind of strategies as well to save for college because what we are trying to do, it doesn't matter how, where we are getting the money from, right? We want to have a place, a bucket to take the money and pay the college. Okay? Yes, you, you so, just need to be ready. Correct, correct, right, right. And right. Uh, some people also think of, you know, using their, you know, IRA accounts uh, to pay mm-hmm. for college, right? Yeah. So, so let that's me what I was you. about to ask you. A lot of people suggested like you can do uh, you can grow your money in Roth IRA and uh, use it for college um, uh, because there you are able to, uh, you have a, a most, uh, I think you have a, about 22,000 limitation on the contribution every year. Um, so that way you're able to save more on that, right? Uh, let me uh, rephrase that, right? Uh, yeah. Roth IRA, right? Roth IRA, it's also an after tax investment. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are investing, uh, in, if you are being able to put uh, money into a Roth IRA, that means you are fall in, in the income range, uh, like for two, 2021, if you make uh, more than $208,000 household income, you won't be able okay. to put money into Roth IRA. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what happens here, uh, any money sits in an IRA or your retirement account generally not counted against your financial aid application. Okay. So... Uh, and when people are applying for financial aid and all that, uh, you know, they are subject to the income limitation. So some, uh, when someone is making a lower income uh, compared to you know, others, they may be able to uh, you know, put money into Roth IRA. Yeah. Uh, when yeah. they, uh, the money that goes into the Roth IRA comes out of it always you know, tax-free. So the, your contribution, whatever money you put away, you can always take the money out tax-free. The because gains, you already paid for it. Correct. Correct, correct. You already pay the taxes, just like you know how you put the money into the 529, mm-hmm. yeah. right? But uh, so there are some, you know, uh, qualified uh, uh, 
uh, exception for that rule when you take out money, right? So usually um, you have to wait until the age of 15 and a half to take out the gains without paying any penalty. That's true. Yeah. Right? But mm -hmm. in a, like most of the time, if you are uh, taking the money out for college, you may be able to uh, avoid the penalty, but you would still pay the income tax on the gain. Mm -hmm. So the gain will be uh, most likely will be taxable generally. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it is, um, is, that a, uh, is that a good strategy? I don't know. I, right. Uh, you put away, for an example, $100,000 over the, uh, you know, over uh, 20 years, for an example, into Roth IRA. And yeah. then your child is in college. You can take out the $100,000 without any tax consequences and pay the college. It's a great deal. Mm -hmm. If you had to tap into the gain, then you have to be very careful about how you are doing it. Sure. Yeah. Now, um, that's a very valid point, and um, I have a question related to that. So with uh, 529, I heard in some of the state, they don't have that tax-free um, law, and uh, it looks like New Jersey is one of them. Is that still valid, or is there any changes happening? That's a very, very good question. Uh, you know, 529, uh, you do not get federal income tax deduction for your contribution. That's the general rule, right? But yeah. some states, uh, it is subject to state specific. Some states do give you tax deduction up to a certain level, certain limit, okay, for your contribution. For an example, uh, you know, uh, I know New, uh, New York does give some tax benefit on your contribution, I believe up to $10,000 or some sort, but uh, please double check with that. And uh, New Jersey, we used to not have that option, but uh, New Jersey just changed some uh, re recent law changes, allowed people uh, who is, uh, I believe, uh, earning uh, less than $200,000 of income, now uh, they can uh, take a state income tax deduction um, up to $10,000 of their contribution. That is something new for New Jersey. I hope this will uh, motivate a lot of parents to do something uh, for their kids and take some income tax uh, benefit, uh, I mean, uh, tax deduction. Uh, I hope that will, that's a new update for New Jersey residents. Hopefully that will help. I think that's a great news because a lot of my friends in New Jersey, uh, they did not go for it because there's no tax benefit. Why should I? No. So it looks like <laughs> no. there, is a, there is a way to do it. Right. Yeah, ask them to call the accountant and hey, um, uh, can I do this? You know. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Awesome. And um, there's another question uh, came from uh, Soma. So let's say I uh, got a, a 529 plan from New Jersey, but I want to send my uh, kid uh, to a college in uh, Boston or somewhere. How does it work? Is it um, any restriction for outside of uh, this? state where I, um, you know, grow my money? Uh, generally not. If you have, a, you know, a traditional 529 plan that can cover a course uh, 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 around the country, no problem. But yeah. uh, there is something called in-state college, uh, a prepaid college tuition uh, plan, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're on the prepaid college uh, plan, there, there are certain states set up a plan for certain states saying that, hey, if you pay uh, today's college course to this, into this account, as long as your child go to uh, this school in the state, you, you just pay today's course in the future. So in that uh, situation, there will be some restrictions, but uh, on the traditional 529 plan, you can uh, you know, use that plan to pay for your college anywhere in the country. Awesome. Great. So uh, you want to show us, uh, you know, I think you, you, you wanted to show some uh, oh, well, I know when you were talking about, uh, you were talking, you know, I, I, you know, when I said the 8% of rate of return and all that, you're like, uh -huh. how do I find a little bit more information about that, right? Yeah. yeah. So uh, as financial planners, we have a, a lot of tools to, you know, attract a, a mutual fund or stock to find out what the rate of return and all that. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, you know, on an individual basis, we help educate those, our, cli our clients on those, uh, you know, areas. But, you know, for this purpose, for in order for you to, you know, uh, uh, get some information, let me introduce my friend, uh, Google. So if you can open up internet browser and, uh, op uh, you know, share your screen, I will uh, show you some ideas. Uh, public right. information, you know, it is available to anyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is, you know, since I'm, uh, I'm, I do work, a lot of work in New Jersey, I'm going to look for what is available in New Jersey, right? So Sure, yeah. Where do you want me to go? 
uh, Google Franklin Temperature. So this is the New Jersey upward pipeline plan. So in order for you to take the tax deduction for the state, you have to invest your money into the uh, Franklin Templeton pipeline plan. Okay. okay. So here. Okay. Um, Frank, can you uh, okay? Can you click on the uh, uh, logo there, please? Yes. yes. I think I am in the home page only. Okay. Um, Are you looking for any any? Uh, um, the home page is something is missing on the home page. Let me just see what I see on my home page here. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have a different home page in mind because maybe you are from a different state. Let me share my screen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Because they, this is, I guess, this is meant for New Jersey, right? Yes, this is meant for New Jersey. And uh, you know, if you uh, can anyone uh, see my screen yet? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you see this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So if you look at, uh, you know, uh, for an example, if you want to find out a little bit more information about Franklin Templeton, and uh, they are five to nine plants, right? Mm -hmm. So investments. If you go to investments, and if you click on five to nine portfolios, right? Mm -hmm. That's where you will be able to find a lot of information. Those are public information, right? Generally, when it comes to investing uh, towards to 529, uh, yeah. there's an option to invest based on the age, okay? Mm -hmm. Or you can uh, pick a uh, 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 mutual fund portfolios, okay? For an example, let's say a, a child is uh, five years old, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they will ask you to maybe invest in this uh, age-based portfolio. What happens on the age-based portfolio, uh, the longer we have until the child go to college, the, the fund manager will be taking higher risk in the fund. The sooner we have until the uh, child go to college, we will be taking less risk. So systematically, they will be reducing the portfolio risk based on the child age because nobody wants to take a lot of risk when the child is about to go to college. So let's, let, okay, let's see. Um, let's just go to the next page here for an example. Sure. Okay. Um, um, everybody's familiar with the fire, you know, uh, of SMB 500 index, right? So they yeah. also have an SMB 500 portfolio for a 529 here. If you look at it here, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is going to provide all the information what you need to know about the portfolio. Again, when you are investing, right, the, uh, the past performance doesn't uh, uh, predict the future, but it gives you an idea about what you can at least accept and plan for it, right? So if you look at this portfolio, um, the inception date is 2003, okay? And uh, from 2003, the rate of return is about 7% on this portfolio because uh, some pro portfolio managers, they don't want to take a lot of risk and they will you know, take less risk even with the S&P 500 portfolios. So let me see if I have another S&P 500 portfolio here. Let me see this one, okay. They have different portfolios and I just wanted to see Okay, that's the same one I want. Let me go to the other portfolio for an example. Okay, and second one. Okay, um, let's look at, um, is that the same one? Let me see. Yes, if I look at another portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. So um, what you see here, who is managing your portfolio? Uh, yeah. You know, set, uh, your qualified people are managing your portfolio. And um, the, from the inception, what's the rate of return, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the rate of return from the inception. In the last 10 years, the return is around, uh, you know, 15.25. So when you are doing this, uh, you know, make sure you understand what are the sales charges on, on, on investment, right? So usually there's a front upfront sale charge when you invest money into mutual funds, for an example, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, first, uh, like for someone who is, you know, let's say they are doing investment at the very last minute, right? So they will pay, for an example, let's say they are putting $550,000, the upfront sales charge of 1.5.5% on that money. So you need to first make up what you paid as a, you know, as a sales charge on that mutual fund before you start making money. Now, some people will say, hey, why don't I put money on the year the child go to college? Hey, you can do that. Obviously, you can do that. But 
you are going to take a haircut at the beginning and then you have to learn right after that. So th th that's mm -hmm. the thing there. And uh, please, you know, look at the um, documents and uh, review the uh, prospectus of these funds because they will talk about go a little bit detail into how uh, the fund will, uh, you know, take the expenses and all the expense related information. Yeah. You can find it here. Uh, make sure you review that before you want to even think about investing uh, on this any of this account. Okay, so this is just yeah. an example. And uh, let's say you want to look at uh, the Virginia 529 plan, right, which is uh, offered by American Fund. So if you Google it, you will have similar, you know, a website you can navigate through and get some information. Hope it will help you, you know, find out, hey, what am I expecting from this returns? You know, like, mm -hmm. sort of way do that, you have to look at different portfolio and see how they are performing and how long do I have until I invest that money. That's great. I think that's a very good eye opener. I'm just so confusing because there's too many portfolios you are showing. So as that's a layman, <laughs> I mean, I, I just excited. I mean, at the same time, as a layman, how do I know which your portfolio is good? You know, that's why uh, you know people like us <laughs> you reach work, out right? to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, you know, I cannot just say, "Hey, go do this," without understanding your goals yeah. and you know, your personal circumstances. Mm -hmm. and we have five fingers; not all of them are seen. Yeah. So, individual basis, though, we can uh, identify the specific goals, and you know that's why work working with a professional would definitely be great uh, fit uh, for most of the people. Awesome. And um, are we coming close to the end of uh, this session now? Yeah, I think so. I think you covered um, the last one also. Okay, what uh, I let, wanted to um, maybe um, talk about for the next few minutes, um, just maybe a tip. Yeah, let's open up for the Q and A session. Um, yeah, let's so. do that. And also, I wanted to add this little bit tips on the planning, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for an example, let's say you are doing this five two nine plan, and you are, you know, setting away a thousand dollars a month for an example. Yes. Assuming that you know, you, are, you are paying thousand dollars a month, and assuming that you are you are continue to work, you, mm -hmm. okay, and so nothing happens to you during that time, right? Yeah. That is there are a lot of uncertainties in that area. If you become disabled, right, if mm -hmm. you are not perform your work, how can you continue to pay that five thousand dollars? I mean, one thousand dollars a month, for an example, right? Yeah. yeah. So for that, you, you need to do some risk management, uh, you know, strategies to avoid uh, the risk. So maybe mm -hmm. you can look into uh, disability uh, income policies where you, you can say, if I become disabled, this mm -hmm. amount of income will continue to come to me so that I can fund those accounts will be completed. Or uh, let's say the college cost is $196,000, $200,000 for say, right? In, mm -hmm. two, uh, in 18 years, I need to have $200,000, whether I am alive or no. Right, so you need when you are planning for life insurance planning, make sure you add that two hundred thousand dollars into life insurance, so that if something happens, that two hundred thousand dollars can pay for the cost of college at that time. So your dream will come true, okay. And um, other thing, you know, uh, if you can, if you have the ability, start as soon as you can. Mm -hmm. The waiting for some time will definitely cost you, okay. If you if you yeah. if you want to do it in the future, and if you are willing to do it, you might as well do it now. Okay. Sure. And, uh, more than anything, make sure uh, you know. You, you, if you cannot do it by yourself, if you don't have the time, I know most of your professional have full time job. You know, I'm a professional dedicated to do this for uh, uh, you know my living. Okay. Mm -hmm. So reach out to people like that to help you because uh, yeah. professional we are producers and we need to make sure we understand and do the right thing for you. So work mm -hmm. with the people who can give the right advice rather than you know making a sale. Okay. Don't yeah. for, understand those uh, you know different type of advisors and try to you know interview many advisors uh, as many advisors you can and work with the right person uh, whoever fits into your need sure yeah and another question is um uh like you said i've been procrastinating uh for quite a long time and uh, now my kid is going to college next year and uh, you know probably we are talking about sending her to law college, which is like, you know, seven years duration of it. So is it what to open it now? Uh, um, like I said, right? Or it is too late? Uh, uh, like I said, uh, I, I addressed that during our conversation, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, the thing, uh, let's say uh, your child is uh, going to finish 
bachelor's and go into law school later on, then you have a little bit more time, yeah. right? About six years, I would say. So maybe you can invest in in a way that uh, you know, um, in a way that will be uh, making sense to you. Let's say your child is going to college um, uh, next semester, and you need to invest money, and you will be paying the sales charges, and you will be taking a haircut on your own money. Yeah, yeah. And you need to you need to wait until the market picks up whatever you pay, then uh, the extra is going to grow. And again, there are certain market risks. Right? Let's say the next month market goes down. It's short yeah. time. It's it's uh, it's it can be very common when you're doing that. Instead of doing that, pay the uh, you know maybe you may be able to pay the cards directly from whatever savings you have. Mm-hmm. Or uh, you know you can look into uh, based on your income uh, maybe uh, parents uh, you know, undergrad loans available or uh, you can take student loans uh, in that way uh, you know that would be helpful. But if you if you still uh, open up five twenty nine now and if you pay through five twenty nine it's going to be tax free right? Or as long as pay? as long as the earnings are used for uh, college or higher education yeah. bachelor's. You know, a master's, PhD, mm-hmm. all the earnings are going to be uh, income tax free uh, as long as the money is going to the college. That's great. All right. So that's a very good uh, session that, uh, you know, we have. So let's open up the forum for the questions. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, unmuted. So please, uh, you know, if anyone has a question, please, uh, you know, speak up. We have Karan. I think I have the ability to see the questions too, right? Yes, see. yeah. Please Hi, Mahesh, this is Lakshman. Hey, Lakshman. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so my, my daughter is going to go for college next year. And mm-hmm. I just started opening the 529. I'm in Ohio, Ohio 529 plan. Uh, there are two options which are coming. Like one is for investments and one is going for a CD. So what would be the preferred option at this point of time, having known that uh, my daughter is going to go for college next year? Um, uh, you know, I need to look into a little bit deep into the investment services. I wanted to see, you know, what is the sale charge you are paying. Also on the CD, you said some of the money sitting in CD, but uh, is there any, you know, uh, uh, charge for or distribute the money prematurely? You know, I don't. I want to find out how many years you had to keep the CD, okay? So, uh, in, uh, individual basis, I can look into it uh, and provide the advice later. Yeah, when when we open a CD, uh, it's asking for some t- uh, terms. So, should I give something like uh, till the end of uh, next year so that I can uh, use that for the college, or should I give uh, like the end of her college, like seven years, something like that? Um, you said your child, uh, your uh, kid is daughter is going to college next, next year. Next year. So, it doesn't align with your purpose, right? Yeah, that's why I'm saying, like, no, um, uh, whether I can use that fund, CD fund, for first year, second year, or third year, or fourth year, any any year, right? So um, should I keep I, that CD? I need to, you know, I need to see the terms. Uh, that's you know, some CDs uh, have maturity dates, right? Okay. So I need to make sure I look at the terms of the CDs and also the other investment choices. So without that information, okay. I won't be able to answer that question for you. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for me? So I'm going to share my website for you guys. So anyone wanted to, uh, I think Modi asked me to share the website. It's right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah you should be able to share. Great. And anyone else have any questions? I will be more than happy to answer them. Otherwise, uh, I wanted to uh, thank each and everyone for listening to me. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, hey, Karan, be, before wrapping off, uh, this is Soma. Uh, thanks for answering my one of my questions. No uh, I have follow up on the same question. Uh, as someone mentioned just now, even my son is going to college next year, and I am from New Jersey, and I'm too late in saving into 529 plan as Mahesh or someone mentioned. Yeah. I have a thought of going back to India from past 10 years that still I didn't went, but I keep saying myself. But uh, yeah, to the point is, <laughs> you're on point. the same boat. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, I didn't save anything on the 529, but my son is going to college next year. In this scenario, is there anything I can do? 
to save few tax dollars? Um, okay. Um, let's talk. Um, I would say, uh, mm -hmm. because of the, the, if you look at the market recently, it's very uh, fluctuating, right? A lot of volatility in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are looking for a short term return. And uh, I'm a little hesitant uh, uh, to answer this question without understanding how much of this you want to take, right? And uh, understanding of, uh, you know, how, whatever investment options, right, for you, because the investment option will dictate how much you will be paying uh, as, you know, sale charges, uh, front load charges, or sometimes, you know, uh, that, those, those things we need to look into individual basis to answer those questions because um, that I hope it makes sense to you, right? So, sure. so if I can interrupt, this is Sudha here uh, yes. from Tennessee. Yes. You know, I, I I know there is a reason why we are here. If everybody can afford to have a, a personal financial advisor, we would have gone for that. We wouldn't be attending this meeting, right? So if there are some, if you can give us at least a hint, like where we can educate ourselves instead of having to go for a personal advisor, that's not an option for me. I cannot afford for it. And I may not, not everybody want to do that. So is there a resource at least you can direct to, okay, go learn about these things in this place. So, it will educate you really well. Yeah, so that I can make my plans. Yes, savingforcollege.com. Let me share the website. It provides a lot of uh, information, savingsforcollege.com. Because uh, the reason I'm a little hesitant to talk about investment because I'm limited uh, to you know what I can talk on a public forum and about mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not supposed to talk. Sure, sure. That's why. Uh, yeah. So I just share the website where you know we'll uh, talk about different um, strategies for uh, someone who's in the college and uh, just uh, look into that website. It's right on the chat. Okay. Uh, turn on one more Thank question you. on that one. Uh, I didn't open the 529 plan, so I am not sure. So if you open any Roth IRA or any IRA or 401k accounts, uh, default, they put that money into money market. They don't invest into the market. Okay. Does the 529 also have the money market option? They do have the money market option, but... Uh... Um, generally, you have to pick the investment choice at the time of application. So if you select a uh, money market, it will, it is, the money is going to go to the money market. But, um, you know, generally, uh, most of our clients, they start with, you know, uh, age-based plan. And then uh, during our reviews, we tend to, you know, make changes based on, uh, you know, how the portfolio is performing. If, if it's, like I said, right? And the eight percent return is required for the certain amount in our example. So that number we will find out, right? Then we will say, hey, that uh, you know portfolio is not do, uh, performing that well, so we need to make some adjustment. So generally, most of the five to nine plans uh, will allow you uh, to make investment changes twice a year. So uh, like every six months when you review your uh, five twenty nine, you may be able to make that make those adjustments. Okay, so you mean to say that there is a money market option in the five hundred million? There there will be a money market account in all of the most of the investment choices. Uh, okay, in that case, okay, now I can invest in my money market, but I don't invest in any funds or anything. Yes. So okay, in that case, if I invest in money market, then I can get the tax benefit, correct? Um, the tax benefit uh, is on the growth, right? Uh, there's no uh, tax benefit on this. Uh, uh, okay, the, this is a post-tax amount. Okay, okay. 529 okay. is a five post-tax. Post-tax. So but you mentioned something for the New Jersey, there is an option, some option. Um, uh, if you listen to it again, um, um, mm -hmm. it's a, there's no federal income tax direct contribution. But some states, not all of the state, uh, subject to the state specific, they will give you uh, uh, income tax deduction based on their, uh, you know, uh, their loss. So let's say uh, New Jersey is saying if you are gonna, uh, if you are making less than two hundred thousand dollars of household income, and if you are putting a uh, ten thousand dollars or less, you may be able to take that as a tax deduction. That's what New Jersey is saying. So you have that uh, you know opportunity to take tax deduction for that contribution. Okay. So state income tax deduction for that. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense. At least ten thousand I can get for yes. New Jersey. Please, please, uh, you know, consider with your tax advisor and just you know because it's subject to the income uh, limit. Uh, I don't know how much you are making and all that. So uh, mm. please, if you're accountant. 
Hi, this is Murali. Uh, I think this 10,000 is deduction, not a credit, right? It's not dollar to dollar credit to your tax. It's, it's, a, it's a deduction. Correct. Correct. Oh. It's not a credit, it's a deduction. Cool. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Any, okay, it's uh, 10.30. All right, so, yeah, let's, uh, I think uh, uh, it was a great just, question. Yeah, just one question. Sure. Uh, I already have a 521 and 529 plan for my daughters, uh, mm -hmm. but it did not perform well. Uh, it's the same thing. The balance is the same as what I have been, my own capital. Uh, it is already invested in age-based thing, but uh, it did not perform well, so... And I heard that it is going against, uh, in, in the FAFSA form, it is added as an asset, which is uh, not a good thing, so. So, you know, uh, if you think, uh, you know, you will be uh, qualifying for uh, financial aid, yes, the uh, asset, uh, uh, this is an uh, asset towards the child, so it will be counted uh, uh, as, you know, a side asset. But uh, uh, regards to your investment, right? Uh, please check with your advisor and make some, you know, uh, ask them to make some recommendation based on what, how the fund is performing. It seems like, you know, there's no review you have done since. How long have you been uh, uh, investing into that account? In six, seven years now. Okay. Yeah, I went to Chase. Okay. Oh, you don't have an advice, you just went to the bank and did it? Correct, yeah. Okay, so reach out to a local advisor and uh, take you take a look at that account. And also, you know, now that you have the tax benefit, the Franklin Temple, then maybe uh, you know after you speak to a tax advisor, maybe you can move roll over that money into Franklin Temple. Then if you you know maybe that will give you some extra benefit. Mine is in Franklin Templeton. Okay, okay, so yeah. we just need to look at the investment for since there are so many portfolio, right? So we have to make sure. Uh, you are in the right portfolio based on your child age and the time uh, horizon we have. But I think this uh, getting the deduction on the state, is it a law, recent law? Or it is like... very recent. It uh, came up in uh, mid-August. Oh, okay. So it was, the deduction will start from 2021? 21. Tax return? Correct. Oh, so I have been investing all these years. That's gone. No, no, that would definitely help you. Uh, whatever you have invested uh, uh, for this year would definitely help you. Please consult with your CPA. You no, will no. Be able this to year you. I can get, but what about previous years? Uh, no, uh, no, uh, I don't think that, uh, that's a good question for the CPA, but I doubt that uh, they will uh, retroactively give credit. Okay. And yeah. may I ask, like, if I have to consult you, how does it work? Like, is it like a flat fee or? Um, that you know, I have to uh, sit down with you and find out of how complicated the issue is. Um, I, I will be very recent. Okay, thank you so much. Probably All right, yeah, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Karen, for sharing all this uh, awesome information. It was very, uh, you know, valuable. Thanks for the, with the community. Yeah, you are very welcome. And uh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Prime America, for this opportunity. And yeah. uh, very nice to uh, meet all of you today. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I feel honored to answer, take your question and answer your questions because, uh, you know, it's your money you earn and you work very hard for it. Okay, anybody's, uh, you know, dealing with your money, make sure they have the proper credential to help you out because lifetime earnings, you don't want that money to go wrong. So talk to the right people, get help and good luck with everything and have a good night. Yeah. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Good night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.